Hey YouTube, this is Alex, or Absitively. This video is going to describe how I made my mini forge, the parts involved, and it should give a pretty good description of how to make it. Um, I made it for under $100, it works really well so far, and it should last quite a while because of the materials that I used. I hope you enjoy it, thanks for watching, please subscribe and share the video if you like it. This is my first primitive attempt at a Venturi. Um, I flared it out there. It uh, does not work in the open air, and I really didn't get it working well enough, and that's why I am working with what I'm working with now. So I went out and spent some money. I think all said and done, I've got 60 bucks into all the burner parts, which is actually pretty, well, not just the burner, just the forge itself, the whole thing. So it's about 60 bucks for the entire forge. This I picked up at Goodwill today. I'm gonna to use this as my foundry body because it has a nice wide diameter. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to, how thick I'm gonna make it, but I'm looking at my end hole in the middle being, I don't know, eight inches, six to eight inches, maybe this in diameter for this uh, inner thing here. So I may plug that up with newspaper, I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm gonna try using this right here it's a cake pan to mold the top for the vent um, the, the piece that you set on top of the uh, foundry to help uh, give yourself a little bit uh, more insulation and I'll go over the pieces of the burner real quick um, so this I got at Walmart it was about 12 bucks and then because of the stupid way that they sell stuff um, Instead of trying to adapt a 1 8 pipe back out, I got this one and then got some fittings to go with it. So I have this piece right here, which is, I believe, I don't remember what the fitting size is. I can post a, a picture of the receipt later on. But anyway, I had to fit it to get it to a regular uh, 3 8 gas line. Um, and then here's my main issue right now. This fitting right here is a, I believe it's a 1 half? see oh this is a three eighths to one half um ball valve and then this is a one half or this is a three eighths to three eighths uh fitting the problem is that this galvanized fitting isn't a compression fitting and there's no stop for this to screw in so it screws in fine on the gas line side but on the ball valve side which is made for a compression fitting i'm gonna have some have to find some way to seal that up properly but other than that we have regulator a fitting that adapts the regulator to the gas line and then the 3 8 to 3 8 fitting for the 3 8 to 1 half ball valve uh, 1 half a male to 1 half female uh, elbow and then 1 half uh, black pipe nipple I believe it's a 6 inch nipple and then I have it's a 1 half to 1 8 yeah 1 half to 1 8 um, uh, reducer and then a small red brass nipple and then an end cap. I'm gonna drill this. Um, I can't find my little drills right now, but I here are the drill bits that I was working uh, or talking about yesterday that I couldn't find. So the smallest or the rather the largest one that I have here is a number 61. I bought these on Amazon. I think it was like $12 or something that I paid. It comes with this little uh, handle thing that you uh, put in there with a little chuck. And the gas jet is what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill through the side of this reducer uh, for this 1 8 nipple, um, use a set screw, thread it in there on the side to hold that centered in place. So I may actually drill through the, uh, the end cap and the nipple itself um, for the gas jet and then uh, center that with a set screw in this because this should be pretty easy to drill. Uh, that'll create the venturi after I uh, flare this end here. So I'm probably gonna use this two inches here to flare it um, and then that will go in at a tangent to the inner diameter through the side here I'll have to drill that so that it creates a swirling effect around the crucible which will go in here and then the cap which this will help mold will go on top um, the refractory that I'm using here is uh, it is Miko's Red Devil. You want the 610 on Amazon. It's about 22 bucks. Um, through a bunch of stuff, I got them to discount it for me because they sent me the wrong thing and they had some stuff mislabeled and all sorts of stuff. Um, this right here, this is black gold perlite. I got it at Ace Hardware. You can find it in just about any gardening section, I believe. 
And what I'm going to do is mix two gallons of this, eight quarts, with a half gallon of this, and that should give me a nice 3,000 degree factory. This is up resistant at temperatures up to 3,000 degrees. Sorry for the terrible focus there. Um, there we go. 3,000 degrees for setting and repairing fire brick. Um, should have no problem with the stuff we're melting, and this uh, foundry should actually be able to even melt steel. Um, this I picked up at a thrift store, it's some kind of a skewer or something, and I'm going to use it as a metal stirring rod. Hopefully it should hold up. I believe it's solid stainless, and it's made for sticking in fires, um, albeit probably not 3,000 degree fires. Anyway, so that that's my materialist so far. And as FPS Russia has said many times, safety is number one priority. There. So right now I'm drilling the hole for the gas uh, jet to go in through the side here. Okay, so this is a smaller hole than I'm going to need, but I'll start it small and then go larger. That is a little bit off to the side. This is an XY cross vise. Very handy piece of equipment to have if you have a drill press. It makes adjustments easier. And we'll call that a good enough start point. This is really easy to drill. It's nice and soft. I have some cutting, uh, cutting fluid. I guess I'll put some. We got knocked over and the thing was open so it spilled and that'll probably tick my brother off, but oh well. So just a nice couple drops of cutting fluid. Um, it'll smoke a little bit. But I should only have to drill through one side of this. And it is going very nicely thus far. And we are through. Okay, I need to swap out my drill bit. <laughs> but that is a nice hole. Almost perfect. Okay, we have our drill bit swapped out. And I'm gonna make the hole a little bit larger. She may have said that at one point. Probably not in those words. This drill press is wimpy. And the hole is larger. Okay, cool. This is our piece. And I'll rinse that off in our quenching. And hopefully that's the right diameter. I think I got it. Um, don't want to drop my phone in that quenching dish. That's what I'm using as a camera right now. But we want this to be tight, but not so tight we won't be able to get anything through. This actually might be a little too tight, we'll see. I may have to drill that a little bit larger. Well, that's not a problem. I have larger drill bits. Anyway, um, I am probably going to head in for now because it's getting late and it's I don't want to annoy my neighbors by making noise with power tools outside at night. So as you can see right now, I'm heating the end of this black pipe here. I'm going to try and get it up to a nice red temperature where I can start flaring it out. And I want at least an inch and a half to two inch flare on the end. Um, the ratio that everyone quotes is 112. I don't think it's quite that specific, but I want it flared enough. Hold on, adjusting my grip because uh, I don't want to be too close to that hot end there. As you can see, I'm holding a welding. I'm holding out the welding glove right now. I do have some pliers on hand in case I need to change over if it gets too hot or whatever. But anyway, um, I only have two hands, so I'll pause the video here and cut this in later.
This is a glass burning uh, or glass uh, heating hothead for doing beadwork. And I, it is working a lot better at heating up than the little nap gas torch. Um, that's great for spotting and for doing small stuff with uh, copper. But when you're working with steel, sometimes you gotta be a little bit hotter. So this is working great. So here's how our flare is coming along so far. It's a little bit uneven, I'll fix that. But anyway, you can see we are indeed flaring it out. Put it back on the fire. And what I just did is I just quenched the handle a little bit because or I, right now it's functioning with the handle because it was getting a little bit warm from the heat conducting. But as long as I keep quenching it, then the tip stays warm. And because steel's a terrible heat conductor, we're still good. Okay, so this isn't the best flare I've ever seen. It's not perfectly uniform, but it does flare quite a good amount. It's pretty good on the inside as far as its roundness. I don't know if you can see that. So it's not perfect, like I said, but it's not terrible. And I think it should be good enough. If not, we can always change it. So there's our flare for our Venturi. Now, We'll go ahead and start assembling pieces. So it's not pretty, but this is the inside that I'm going to be using, uh, the wire that I'm going to be using for some structure inside the lid. Um, let's see if we can get a good picture of that. Um, so I wrapped it around, got the kind of basic outer diameter shape. Uh, the piece that it's hanging from is not part of it, it's just using to hang it to suspend it so it's not at the bottom. Um, and then I may make some better porter handles for it, either welding some onto the wire that's protruding from the top or whatever. But the main purpose of those is so that uh, I can lift up the lid. And um, then I will also coat the inside because I don't want any wire exposed except for the two handles through the top. So I'll probably coat the inside of the, the mouth a little bit uh, thicker um, with some of the extra refractory. So anyway, I'm gonna mix them up and pour that first and get that started and then I'll start working on that. This I made to kind of spread stuff. It's a really cheap piece of aluminum-ish pipe. I don't even know if it's a, uh, plain aluminum or if there's plastic or whatever in it, but I'm not heating it up. This right here is what I'm gonna use for the inside diameter here. So you can kind of see that it's, um, it'll probably give me about two inches on all the way around, um, but it should give me a, a pretty good amount of space to work with. Okay, so now this is the finished uh, furnace. Um, it needs to dry and be baked and everything still but uh, this is what it is. You can see at the top it looks a little bit darker. That is because I ran out of refractory cement and so I used a bentonite sand mixture. Bentonite clay and sand, basically a crushed up cat litter and sand um, and molded that in above. So there's about an inch, maybe inch and a half of that um, above the rest of the, uh, the rest of the thing is solid, um, the refractory mixture that I was using, which is perlite and the refractory cement. So uh, this is the inside of it. You can see it's not super deep, but it doesn't really need to be because I have a very small crucible and this will even fit a larger crucible. Um, I'm not doing any like one pound uh, ingots or anything like that. So this will work just fine for my needs and I should also be able to use it as a forge too. Um, and then here's the lid right here. So you can see that will fit when it's dry right on top of there. And so it doesn't matter that it doesn't go all the way to the top. Um, it should be a nice, uh, very portable furnace, um, not too heavy. When it's wet, it's probably maybe 20 pounds, if that. Um, with the lid, that's another two and a half pounds or so, maybe. Um, now, probably not even 20 pounds. I don't know, maybe altogether 20. Um, but yeah, so that is the furnace. And uh, like I said, I put a, a almost straight uh, refractory mixture around the inside and that's about a centimeter thick all the way around so that should uh, basically take up and make sure that the uh, sand and bentonite doesn't get too hot. Hey YouTube, sorry it's dark. Um, this right here is the uh, baking out process. Um, when life gives you a mini cast iron pan filled with wax you use it to burn out and bake out your forge. Um, what I'm doing right now is I have the lid on, I'm baking the moisture out of the lid. It's making quite a nice chimney. Um, and it's all, basically because it's in the cake tin, it has uh, 
the top was so soft and I'm pretty sure it's because of the humidity and everything. Anyway, so that's what's happening right here. This is going to be the very first test fire of my burner. You can see I have a fire extinguisher here. It's kind of hard to see in the dark, but that's in case anything goes wrong. Nothing should go wrong. I'm going to put on safety glasses just in case. So let's see, I'll get my clear ones because it's dark. And then I have my flint sparker. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to open our gas line. No leaks there. Then we're going to, we have our uh, ball valve here blocked. We're going to open the reg a little bit. And the direction for the regulator is righty loosey, I guess, because it's a regulator and they're backwards. So I'll open that a little bit. And then we're going to open this line. Okay, good. So we know that that's on. And then I'm going to spark it in just a sec. I'm trying to do this one handed. Okay, so I'll open this a little bit. And we have liftoff. So I'll close it a little bit. Oops. So that's a little bit too much. So uh, that hole, even at the smallest that I, or the, the largest bit that I had, the 0.61 was a little bit larger, uh, or rather smaller than most people use, and it's still a little much. So we'll see. But that is a pretty good burn, especially because it's windy and stuff. Um, and this is the very first time I've tried it. I may be able to tune that and get a little bit better jet out of it. So this is the very first time the burner has been in the, uh, um, the, in the furnace, and I'm about to put the lid on, hopefully enough to bake out all of the moisture, and it's a little backwashy right now, so I might need to turn that down, but anyway. There we go. I got it out. Now that's more like it. So I'm actually going to turn it up a little bit now, just a little bit. going on which is exactly what it's supposed to do and that should easily get hot enough to melt iron or bronze or copper or aluminum in reverse order and then I was turning the regulator up a little bit Well, there we have our mini foundry. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.